and welcome back. With us this morning for our first conversation is the Minister of Health and Wellness, the Honorable Kevin Bernard. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Isana. Good morning, Isana. Good morning, Good and we, here. Nice. <laughs> We're going to be discussing all things health. I know there have been quite some developments in your ministry. You're here to share with us all of these latest happenings. What I want for us to begin with, first of all, Minister, is recent news of a recall for one of the vaccines that I'm certain many of us Belizeans uh, took during the first phase of the vaccination process in the COVID pandemic, and that's um, the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. What are, what are your thoughts, and, and from a ministry perspective, where do we stand locally where the recall is concerned? Well, one of the things, uh, let, me, let me just point out, however, though, Isani, mm -hmm. that um, from my checks, uh, as in any medication, in any type of, uh, there will always be some level of uh, side effects in mm -hmm. some cases. Now, from the information I have, uh, the AstraZeneca vaccines were recalled, not necessarily because of the side effects. That is one component of it. Yeah. However, the real reason for the recall has been because there have been the, uh, zero demand mm -hmm. for the vaccines and there were many in supply and uh, I know that uh, from the information I have received as well and I did check with my uh, with our counterparts mm -hmm. at WHO PAHO in terms of what is the reality behind all of this uh, and what we found out is that yes um, the company has decided to, to do the recall yes there have been uh, some issues of uh, thrombosis in, in some cases. However, um, there is nothing in there to say that the vaccine has, hasn't proven its efficacy. efficacy. Yeah. And so, from the understanding that I have, uh, while these, this decision was made, um, it, it's not something to be alarming about uh, or to be frantic about. Uh, as you know, even in Belize, um, the demand for vaccine has also dropped tremendously. Mm -hmm. uh, COVID has gone past us, but that doesn't say COVID still doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, we still have the Pfizer vaccine in country. I don't think we have any of the AstraZeneca. Those, those that, uh, that we had had expired, and I think mm -hmm. we had disposed of those. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that gives us that also that relief. Um, however, like in anything, you have to, you know, you take everything uh, from its position. And, and so we are following up. Uh, in terms of, we haven't had any major case or, or cases to say we have had problems as is related in some countries. And so I'm happy that that, that has not the case in Belize. Uh, but like I said, uh, we follow the guidelines and uh, we don't have any of these AstraZeneca in, in supply uh, that is valid to, to distribute to any of our citizens. So, uh, and if it was, we would have not been able to continue with that supply. On to another uh, quick point. You're recently back from Jamaica, where Belize, among other countries, was acknowledged, and, and perhaps rightfully so, for the considerable reduction in mother-to-child uh, HIV transmission. Let's talk about that. Let's, 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 let's talk about achieving that milestone. Well, one of the things that I think that we must, I must herald and, and thank uh, all our health care workers, especially our public health nurses, our community uh, health workers, and the team behind the scenes as well, or uh, person in the lab, because remember this is a team effort. It's, and of course the support of PAHO, uh, who has assisted Belize. Uh, the EMTCT uh, program started way back in 2004. Uh, and I know in 2010 there was a relaunch of the same program because you had to add syphilis at that time. Yes. Uh, where there was, uh, we were looking in the region that there was a rise in syphilis uh, in mother to child. Um, and so it has been a lot of hard work, preventative care, early diagnosis, uh, making sure um, young mothers with, with children are able to, uh, you are getting the necessary access to care. Um, and so those are the efforts that were put in place and it's constant monitoring. Now, it, the elimination of mother-to-child transmission and syphilis and HIV and syphilis, uh, as I said, is not, is not a, it was not an easy feat. Uh, it took a lot of hard work, took a lot of commitment, uh, it took a lot of dedication 
uh, and that's one of the reason why while you are certified now and, and, and Belize joins seven, six, 17 other countries I think in total uh, with, with, with the certification of the elimination of mother to child transmission of HIV and syphilis so we, 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 we were in Jamaica last week uh, we joined along with Jamaica and the St. Vincent and the Grenadines who are the three other countries in the, in the region to have been uh, certified what we must do now is remain vigilant uh, yeah. to make sure that our surveillance system continues to focus on how we continue to prevent uh, any uh, further transmission. And when we say elimination, it doesn't mean that they may not still exist some level. Yeah. Because there are some people that refuse to go mm -hmm. to the facilities to get checked, uh, maybe because of stigma, all these things. But our responsibility as the Ministry of Health is to ensure that we reach out, we get out there, and that's one of the responsibilities of our public health nurses, our community health workers, they are the ones that have been on the ground. And then of course our surveillance team that ensure that we are, we are monitoring what is happening across the country. Uh, and so every four years we now need to go back, so in the next four years we need to ensure that our validation, our certification remains. And so the efforts must be not because, oh, we are certified, we chair and all that, it's now to get the job done to make sure we keep um, elim the elimination status. Similar to the malaria uh, status yeah. that we yeah. did last really year. Um, so yeah. that in two consecutive years, as, as highlighted by the director of PAHO, mm -hmm. Belize has really um, gone leaps and bounds in terms of many, many public health measures. Uh, we are now, under the, one of the commitments we are talking about is how can we eliminate uh, cervical cancer. That's mm -hmm. another issue. But it's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take yeah. a lot of commitment. That's one of the reason why we uh, launched the HPV uh, mm -hmm. vaccines as well, so that we can start to see much less uh, effects of, of a person, women especially, yeah. with cervical cancer. And so there's a lot going on, however, Isani and April, in terms of the, the Ministry of Health. Um, and sometimes a lot of these things are not uh, publicly known, yes. yes. But a lot of work has been done. Um, I must commend, and I, I don't, I know I can't single out people when it comes to all the efforts, <laughs> but I must okay, commend. Trouble. Yeah, <laughs> I must commend Dr. Bear, um, mm -hmm. who has been the brainchild behind all of this. Mm -hmm. I must commend uh, Nurse Deville and uh, and all the other uh, public health nurses, our community health workers. As I said, uh, Nurse Deville was the one join, jo that joined me. Yes. Uh, Dr. Bear was out at another seminar in Brazil. And so she wasn't able to, to join us. Uh, at the end of the day, it is them, uh, those persons who are out there every day doing the work that has allowed us to do this. And of course, the, the, the person who have been affected that are able to come to the facilities and get the necessary treatment and attention and willing to, 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 to go through the diagnostic so that we can be able to prevent um, mothers from having any transmission of, of HIV and syphilis. And so, it's a big win for Belize uh, and something that we must celebrate. But like I said, we must also continue to remain vigilant so that they, uh, our people can uh, ensure that we are free from this uh, issue. And we continue to work hard at the ministry to ensure that everybody understands what this means. Uh, what I, what one, one of the, um, the persons when I was speaking to in Jamaica said, you know what, we need to take this certificate photocopy it mm -hmm. and place it in every public facility across the country to remind them we have gotten this far let us not regress let us continue to push harder so we could continue with the great work that we have been doing one of the um and i'm glad you, you touched a little bit on the the ways that the ministry works along with other entities but i kind of wanted you to to emphasize a little bit more on it because we often speak to different organizations different ngos that they are fighting a particular cancer, a particular disease, and we know that they work instrumentally with the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Can you talk a little bit about those partnerships and how it actually does work? Well, you know that um, when it comes to the Ministry of Health, or health on the whole and, and in our country, we have a direct relation with PAHO WHO. Uh, they provide a lot of technical support to Belize, a lot of training. Uh, we, we have where as well there's programs under the PAHO uh, program budget uh, that we benefit from. Uh, we access uh, opportunities through the pandemic fund. Um, there's also, uh, we, we also 
get benefits from other organizations, the IDB, for example, World Bank, uh, where um, there are sometimes concessionary loans, uh, small loans granted to, 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 to Belize, or even where the government then identify needs that are important for public health issues uh, that we access. And but our, our direct partner definitely is for WHO, where we work very closely with them. Um, in fact, um, through Dr. Barbosa, the, the new director, one of his commitment was to see how he could Im increase support to the regions. And Belize has gotten the approval through the PAHO office to have more technical support uh, personnel. So there's much more things that we are able to access support from. Uh, while in Jamaica as well, I had a, a brief bilateral um, meeting with the, uh, the, the director. And one of the discussions that I, we spoke about is how can uh, we engage now with more in pushing digital health reform within the, within the, uh, the, the country. As you are aware, we are right now uh, working on a health reform project. We have to look at the whole health sector in Belize, private, public, and how are we going to ensure that it, we, we can tie all of these things. NHI is, on, is rolling out. Um, where does Ministry of Health fit in as a regulator, the providers of NHI? So we have to find a balance. Way. So we're looking at various models. When I was in Chile, we got a, a quick brief of how Chile system works. They work totally different from us, uh, where in the case of Chile, they don't provide hospital services. They are only public health services. Yeah. And so they only look at vector-borne issues and, and HIV and these issues. How effective is that model? It has its benefits. It has, it has proven um, positive for them, but it comes with additional costs. Yeah. You see, so there's a, that's what I'm saying. We have to look at areas where that we tailor to, to our country needs, to so our economic conditions at the same time. Um, but yes, we, we work closely with, 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 with PAHO, we work closely with the IDB, we have worked uh, with World Bank. Uh, we have um, COMISCA, which is another uh, group uh, from the ministry, body of the Ministry of Health and Health Ministers uh, from the region of the, the Central American region and uh, uh, Dominican Republic, where there's also the uh, support that we, we get. And I'm trying to remember the name of this organization, the Global Fund. They have been very instrumental, and I want to thank them too because they have been very supportive, especially in the HIV prevention and care, uh, but we get support from them on a yearly basis uh, in the tunes of millions of dollars in terms of support. So uh, all of these efforts um, has an impact because the, the budget that the Ministry of Health has alone will not be able to sustain all of these type of initiatives that we have. Yeah. And so we have to look at outside sources. We have to look at support from... Uh, we may not have all the necessary skill set in the ministry that are able to address many of the other things. And so that's why with the technical support that comes in from, uh, from PAHO, they are able to add to, to the many um, uh, human resource gaps that we have in terms of addressing some of these issues. And so it, it ties in together uh, when, we, when we work together with these organizations because at the end of the day, uh, the focus is on health, health equity, health access, health improvement, uh, and to make sure that we have our Belizean people living healthier lives. Minister, can you provide us with an update on two projects? I know there was groundbreaking for the San Pedro Hospital, and of course the monies that were earmarked for the construction of a new hospital facility in Belmopan. Where are we with those respective initiatives? Well, I, as you know, the, the work for the contract has already been signed with the one in San Pedro, so that is ongoing now. Um, in terms of the one for the Belmopan, uh, the new tertiary hospital, we have almost, we are almost there finalizing the, the, the land. One of the things is that what we had found out, when, and then when, we, when they did the study, Kabe did the analysis along with us as well, and the technical team went out and looked at the, the two proposed locations. One of the locations proposed was initially um, some property uh, closer to the u university. Yeah. Um, but when you talk about access, road, road access, uh, the ease of um, transporting somebody by flight, we um, you, you wanted, and then some, where you have a, a closer access to, to the actual polyclinic, where the current um, Western Regional is. Yes. The, the, 
the technical person, people are saying that, you know what, we may need to have looked at a different location. And so that was done, and so we had the cabinet. It was taken to cabinet. Um, I know Dr. Musa and um, I think it was Dr. Polanco who had gone to the cabinet to make the presentation. I was away at Chile at that moment when the, the paper was presented. So they had to represent me. Um, Minister Mai was holding over for me at the time. However, the paper was taken to cabinet. Cabinet agreed that we need to then go back and look at the and come back with a position. And so uh, that has been done now, uh, where the Ministry of Natural Resources has identified uh, the necessary the proper location that we need where we are able to build a facility. I think we are now at that stage where we are finalizing that. And once we have that in place, then um, the funds will start to kick in so that we could get the, the tender going for the, for the people to bid and then the work can start. We are hoping that we can do that no later than the end of this year so that construction can start at that new hospital. It will take some time to construct. Uh, we are looking at possibly two to three years, but we want to ensure that that process is done. And so the little kick was the fact that we needed to ensure that the right location we had. Um, and when the first location was identified as some obstacles that were there, um, we had to go back to the drawing board and say, you know what, this is where we, we feel is the best location. And so that's the stage we are, in terms of some measure, I said, that is now already ongoing. The site has already been identified, contract already signed, and I think construction is already started. So these are projects that are ongoing right now. Let's talk about projects that are in the pipeline to hopefully get started next year. And well, so on. well, there's many other things happening in terms of the public health sector and the Ministry of Health. You, you, you are aware now that we recently acquired the a CT scan for KHMH yes. from Mapamang, and that has been tremendously supporting um, uh, the KHMH and, and the general public. Um, in terms of the Central Medical Lab, uh, it was highlighted as well that a few weeks ago we did the groundbreaking for the retrofitting of the Central Medical Lab, another key component. Uh, and the goal for the people at the Central Medical Lab is to ensure that that lab also becomes certified. Um, and so that's the goal, that's the setting. Uh, we want to ensure that we improve the conditions at the facility, but add more um, equipments and, and, and laboratory equipments within the, within the... But not only at Central Medical Lab, we are also focusing at looking at strengthening our regions and our laboratory work at our regions. Uh, we are doing all of these things to ensure that we can strengthen, strengthen surveillance uh, and, and have a better care of service to our Belizean people. Um, because if you are in Corozal, for example, and you have to go and take a, t a, a specific test, yeah. and you have to wait until you go to CML, and then CML takes a few days before it, the results come back. What doctors want is where you're able to get the analysis done quick. So if we are able to strengthen our, our region, strengthen our facilities with having them do some of the necessary tests that, that we don't burden on the CML, then it, 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 it allows us to get better results at a faster pace. That's one. Our central medical store, we have it in the budget. Uh, these are projects that are coming on stream um, where uh, we should be building a proper facility, um, centralized facility with the necessary inventory system in place. And I, I'm making that known now that it's going to be a state-of-the-art system uh, uh, store for, 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 that will house all of our facilities. Currently, what happens is that suppliers house these items for us and then they distribute. We want, to, we want to bring that into one system so that it's managed properly. Uh, it's all about accounting purposes, making sure that we have proper inventory system. Uh, what, is, what, is, what is used right now is all right, but it's not as, as what we really want it to be. And so that's one of the reasons why we are saying we need to build that. Uh, and of course, there are other facilities that are being looked at. Uh, the Northern Regional Hospital, for example, uh, that's another area, uh, a new hospital that has been, through the study of Kabe, identified that we should build a new hospital in, in Orange York. Uh, we're talking about one in, I believe it was in Dangriga, uh, San Ignacio. Um, we've, we've done some retrofitting in Corozal and through the Power Hope Project, the EU project and the, the UN projects. Some of these facilities has gotten some upgrades. Um, we are looking at in terms of another project, the Hopkins Community um, cent Health Center. These are things that are immediate that we need to address. Uh, and then the bigger projects, of course, are longer term projects that are, are on stream, are in plans, but 
we are doing all the necessary studies that needs to be done in Ireland. Whether, whether we construct at the same facility or we look at new land space to build a new facility. Those are the decisions that uh, the team, at the technical people at Tabay are working with us uh, going around the country. I know they were here a few, few, few weeks ago doing that and they did a study in K at Delhi City at KHMH as well. Because even KHMH we need to look at in terms of what do we do with KHMH, do we expand, do we build a new facility for them uh, in terms of providing more access to healthcare and as we roll out NHI there's going to be much more need to look at the facilities not only the infrastructure wise. The human resource gaps that exist is another issue so we are looking at that as well and in terms of retaining our employees because our nurses, I, I was at the nurses conference um, this last week and it was highlighted that uh, from the amount of nurses who leave, who migrate to other countries, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a number. Yes. And so when you're losing your, 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 your workforce in that aspect, the bigger countries who are poaching them because of better salaries, we have to look at ways and means how we are going to retain them. Uh, so, so we are looking at retention packages for nurses. We have, we have recently done the adjustments for the pay scale for pharmacists because again that was another difficult area of keep getting pharmacists within the public sector system. So we have done that. Now we are looking at the proposal for our lab and medical technologists uh, and our vector, vector uh, public health inspectors. So we are trying our very best at the ministry to strengthen uh, that side of the of the management of, of our, in terms of our workforce, so that we can continue to have a cadre of staff uh, readily available to be able to provide the efficient service that we we want to provide. So to two things, Minister. One is the ongoing brain drain, as we've alluded to, with doctors and nurses leaving Belize to pursue their career in healthcare elsewhere. Canada is one of them. How do you propose to retain these medical professionals when I think their primary issue has to do, first of all, with salaries and benefits? I think in any situation where work is concerned, a man has to make a financial decision, an economic consideration as to what works for him or her in that given situation. And if we're looking at a situation where our minimum wage is at five dollars at this point. It's not to say that these individuals are being paid yeah. at the minimum, but I'm just using that as sort of a, a threshold. And somewhere else is offering several times that. And they are saying, well, look, we're not getting the kind of benefits in Belize that is being offered to us elsewhere. If you make an economic consideration, naturally you will lean towards what works better for you in that situation. How do you sort of convince doctors and nurses that Belize is where you want to remain? Let me, let me say this in a different angle. Mm -hmm. For me, we should focus on the 88% of our nurses and doctors who remain in the country to provide yeah. a service to the Belizean people. So those are the ones we have to work on. Those are the ones we need to ensure that, as I said, in terms of looking at the, the compendium of allowances that are given to when, I, when, when Dr. Um, uh, Nurse Bell uh, made the presentation at the nurses' conference, it was received with much great joy from the nurses across the room uh, with the presentation that was made in terms of what we're doing as a ministry in terms of the danger allowance, uh, the, the, the uniform allowances, uh, the, the, the uh, extended work allowance that the, that the nurses have to go. Some of them are burnt out. And so we have to look at how we are going to provide them that incentive so that they could continue to work while attracting other ones. And so one of the things we are, we are doing this year is in terms of providing more specialization in nursing as well, because another area we need to look at. We have decided uh, to partner with UA and other um, organizations to provide a uh, master's degree um, uh, scholarships for nurses in, that are going to be specialized. Uh, like it, anesthesiologist, nurse, and so forth. Yeah. And so these are things that we are looking at in terms of strengthening our uh, medical doctors within the system too. We have also gotten the cooperation of Cuba, for example. You know we send people to Cuba too, yeah. but we have asked them for more specialization. In fact, this year we sent, I think, five 
doctors to be specialized. Uh, two in nephrologists to become nephrologists. I think uh, there's another in pediatric doctor. And so they are, these are things that we're looking at to strengthen. And we're constantly looking at other ways and other countries uh, that we can look at. Uh, I know we have had engagement recently uh, with, with uh, El Salvador. Uh, we are also talking to Mexico uh, to see how we can get our, our medical profession or our health professionals access to some of these scholarships out there uh, in order to strengthen. Uh, but yes, we have to also look at the fact that when we provide all of these training uh, for, the med for the public sector, we need to retain them. Um, uh, people always say, what well, you have to bond them. Yes, but a lot of our people have been on the bond, but we have to make sure that they, the mechanism that is put in place yeah. to ensure that they remain in country is, is there, also important. Are there uh, vacancies for these types of professions in yes. country? Yes, there are vacancies. Okay. Uh, in fact, like I said, when you look at the nursing profession, just alone in Belize, the nursing profession, we have like about 26% of vacant posts for nursing alone in, across the country. And there's still need for, for other um, specialized specialization within the country. We have a lot of gaps. G gynecologists, for example, in the pub I'm talking the public sector, but yeah. when you look at even the private sector, there has, been, there has been some gaps. We need more nephrologists in country. I mean, a lot of people are, 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 are suffering from diabetes. While, while our goal is to ensure that we reduce NCDs as well, but these are things that we have to really look at. And so when you, when you look at the whole spectrum of the health sector and the cardio staff that you need to cover the needs that, the, that the people are being affected by, the issues that people are being affected by, then there's need for us to look at really. And that's one of the reasons why the government and the Prime Minister, and I must thank the Prime Minister for that, has increased our budget. Because we want to ensure that the retention of our staff to be able to provide necessary service. It's not about increasing the budget just to go and build a facility and you can't house it. You, you, you are somewhere coming from. It's about making sure that you, you, you put in the necessary uh, policies and, 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 and plans in place so that we could have more uh, staff engaged, uh, more nurses, uh, more specialized doctors to be able to provide a more efficient service to the division. My second point that I wanted to touch on in line with this conversation that we're having has to do with the relationship between the KHMH uh, Workers Union and the Ministry. Uh, it's several months since they were up in arms over the shortage on um, medical equipment for them to carry out their work in terms of the various risks and exposure that they have to deal with and so on. Where are we with that in terms of being able to perhaps strengthen that relationship between the government and, of course, these workers. Well, let me correct that. It's not an issue with the government or the ministry. The union is representative of the KHMH. Now, there's two different things you have to think about. Of course, we as a regulator, we as a ministry, we have to come in and we have to find a way how we can uh, be the balance between the Carl Hishna Memorial Hospital Authority and with the KHMH Union. There have always been issues. This has gone been for too long. But at the same time, it has to be genuine when it comes to addressing the issues. Because you cannot just have uh, the union um, just, let me put it this way, I want, to, I want to choose my words carefully because I know how these things go. And I want to put it in the fact that we can have sometimes our differences in, in matters. But when you sit around the table as a member of the board, a representative of the union, decisions are made. And then just to go back now and take the different message to your, to your union members, then it, it kind of don't bode well. A lot of these issues that you see that was brought up before has been addressed. It has been addressed. When the union um, requested a meeting with us, and I know we have a follow-up meeting with them, with the, with the FinSec, uh, to discuss their pension uh, issues uh, and they wrote to me and the Prime Minister uh, but they, they, and I did say to them that uh, we have to give the FinSec the opportunity because he has to be at that meeting. Yeah. We have representative of the Ministry, we have the representative of the Ministry of Finance, we have to have representative from KHMH and of course the union that will sit together and look at all of those issues. 
if you have if you have seen over the past few months you haven't heard that issue we have been able to try to ensure that we provide as much necessary supplies and support and resources to all of our facilities including KHMH. in fact i can i will tell you this that when we when we looked at the need for KHMH with that CT scan, for example, that was something that they, necess they, they, they needed badly. So when, when the initial stage started was that would KHMH pay for it, we felt that the ministry, they can't afford it. If we, if we go and have, if we have KHMH dip into their little resources to try and finance a CT scan, they will run into more problems. So, let, so I went to cabinet again and again, thank my cabinet colleagues for supporting. Whenever I go to cabinet, I always uh, have the support because healthcare is important to all of us in the, in, in, in the government. And so we were able to get that. To the, the support of the Ministry of Tourism, uh, Minister Mala and his team, we were able to also get uh, funding. I think about $700,000 were invested, will, is invested to, up, to upgrade the emergency um, system uh, unit at the at the KHMH. So there's a lot of things we are working right now in terms of improvement. And then they themselves as the board have been looking at areas that they are working at the KHMH. So the relationship that exists between the KHMH union and the KHMH authority and the ministry uh, as you as you asked, uh, we have that open dialogue. And that's one of the things that we have said to them. We are open to a discussion. We are open to ensure that we can solve issues. When they had initial, when I took over the Ministry of Health, there was, there was issues with the nursing and, and so forth, matters that had to be addressed. We were able to work on that. And so you, 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 you heard that went behind. There was no more issues. But we gradually have to always look at how we are going to ensure that our staff feel comfortable, that they are working in a good environment, that they are getting what they need uh, for, to be able to provide the service. So, so I don't blame them when, when they complain. And I always say uh, to, to or even the regions, we have an open door policy. If there's an issue that you feel aggrieved about, come to us. Let us hear. Don't be, as, don't be ashamed. In fact, in the Northern Regional Hospital, for example, sometimes you hear things on social media. People text me. They complain about certain things. And I will always be the one who, who don't jump and, and say, oh, this is one do find out, let us find out what, 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 is, what is the root of this issue, you know? And then you, 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 that's how you dialogue, that's how we, that's our, that is how we do that. So there's a lot of things that we are doing to build that communication uh, within, our, within the union at KHMH and, and the government. So we remain open and we remain uh, uh, frank with them to say well, this is what we, 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 we can do when we can and this is what we can do if we cannot do so. You brought up NHI earlier and I did want to, this is one of my final questions. Um, updates about the national health insurance um how can people access it where is it being accessed Pro i know that there were conversations about bringing it to san ignacio santa elena is that still happening yes well, well remember right now we are working on the north side and the islands yes. um, so i believe the through the nhic committee because i don't sit on the nhic committee and the nhi files directly under the purview of the ministry of finance while it's a health service, because remember it's, it's, it's contract service, both in the private and public sector. Yeah. So even government has to, has to bid to be able to. Uh, so from what I understand, that the, the bidding process is still in place. Um, there were some issues with uh, some documents that were submitted that the committee felt that has to go back. Uh, so um, they are asking the persons that, that tendered to resubmit some other documentations. And I thought that has delayed a bit of the timing. However, um, I understand that the committee is trying to make sure that we could get this done within the next few weeks. That's in the north side, Belize City, and San Pedro and, 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 and uh, Key Corker, uh, where then that, prime, that, that NHI services will be able to be provided for those persons. We already rolled out in Orange Walk. So in Orange Walk, for example, there's only uh, three providers, three private sector providers. Through the government, we are working on identifying, again, uh, where we could build a, a polyclinic for a range of to be able to provide NHI service as well for the public sector. And, and, and so just as that, it goes along the different countries. Now in the West, uh, the Prime Minister had made the commitment that early next year, uh, we would want to roll out NHI in the, the rest of the Kaya district. So that will then complete the rollout 
for, for the entire country, uh, benefiting every Belizean who, who um, signs up for the service. And, and trust me, NHI has really bring a great benefit in terms of providing that primary care service to the Belizean people. And I encourage uh, our Belizeans who are out there who have not signed up for NHI to take advantage of it uh, and sign up at your, your, the various locations that where you reside in. Uh, there's this, once there's an NHI provider, you can sign up and take advantage of this very, very important uh, health initiative. Wonderful. As we are wrapping up, um, Minister, there is also this collaboration that you all have with the Ministry of Education uh, in terms of ensuring that we get our safety, health and safety regulations out to our students. What other campaigns are, can we expect for the coming year? Well, you know, one of the things, and, and I, I should have touched on that at the beginning, that one of the important factors that we are working with this Ministry of Education is the healthy eating, healthy living in schools. And, uh, and we are doing that gradually, right, the gradual ban on sugary and sweetened drinks within the school system. And we have gotten the support of, a, or nearly, in fact, nearly every institution across the country. So I really thank them too, because, you know, sometimes you have barriers in, in, in terms of any initiative that you push. But the Ministry of Education, the Minister and his team quickly as well jumped on it. We launched on that uh, nutrition policy last year and we are working with that policy in terms of putting in that part of the plan in terms of the phase out that we are doing. Uh, that's one aspect in terms of how we're working with the Ministry of Education. But there's many other things that we do. We do a lot of outreach programs to the, to the school system, working with the Ministry of Education in terms of getting health education. I know that there's now a health education curriculum within the school system. And these are ways that children are now learning more about their health and what is important. And so this is a very good uh, 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 thing that they have done to implement health education within the school system. And the ministry is working very closely with the Ministry of Education. But I cannot leave by, by not pointing out something very important that I know will, will have a major impact. It's the tobacco control uh, legislation. I, I know that I have seen a draft a uh, copy of the tobacco uh, control legislation. As you know, regionally, globally, uh, that's another issue that people are, have been talking about. Countries have committed to ensure that they can look at the tobacco legislation in terms of reducing the, 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 the amount of people in smoking and all of these issues. Um, so I will just highlight that we have a draft that was sent back to the, from the AG office to the ministry. We are now reviewing that and we are going to continue and I want to thank the, the people at NDAC who were very instrumental in making sure that this legislation has now finally, we have a final draft which we are now reviewing and then hopefully at some point, uh, and as I said, maybe by next year, after I lobby with cabinet and, 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 and our colleagues to see we can pass, a, this is a very impo important legislation. Once we do that, Belize again will be another, it will be another achievement for Belize in making sure that we are looking it in the right direction. We are protecting our citizens. We are trying to ensure uh, that, we, that we, we, we focus on issues that will improve health across the country. Thank you so much, Minister, for, for dropping by, uh, giving us these updates. I know that there's a lot more that we need to discuss, so yes. you have to come back and joining <laughs> us again uh, on another Monday morning. But thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. And we are going to take another break. When we come back, it's all about the Festival of Arts. We have the folks in from the Institute of Creative Arts to tell us more about it. Don't go away. <laughs>